Hey, I'm Russ Wright, and this is American Music Road Trip. too young to remember this, let me give you a little history lesson. Buying music back in the day was an experience. Music charts were something people followed like a religion. The liner notes that came with an album told a story. When you brought a record home, it was customary to lose yourself in its presentation. There was a texture to its experience. You had to go to a store and actually purchase your music. There were chains of record stores. Some of them in the busiest parts of town, but most of them appearing at a mall near you, where they came to die a slow death in the 80s and 90s. So what killed vinyl? First, there were these. Arriving in the late 60s, it was an endless loop on a quarter-inch tape housed in a plastic cartridge, and by today's standards, they were pretty bulky. But now you can listen to the music you wanted to in your car. And then there were these. Next for your hi-fi entertainment came the cassette tape. The bonus here was things became more mobile, and you could record your own masterpieces. And who could forget these? Next, enter the compact disc. They even had a cool logo. And in 1982, the first commercial CD was produced. It was Billy Joel's 52nd Street, and the age of vinyl was about to take a serious hit. The record companies banked on the fact that you would replace your outdated analog life with something more technically advanced and convenient. CDs became the norm, and vinyl was now a dinosaur to the short-sighted consumer. Sales plummeted. CDs ruled at least for the next few decades. And the final nail in the coffin for vinyl was the MP3, and its brother on steroids, the iPod. All the music you ever wanted was in a tidy little box. But were we sacrificing the quality of sound for convenience? The next couple decades were not kind of vinyl sales. The factories that made records became extinct. But is vinyl making a comeback? The short answer is yes. And the numbers might make your head spin. Over 9 million new vinyl records were sold last year, up 52% over 2013. And the sales of used vinyl have never been brighter. I chatted with a couple independent record store owners during this upswing in 2014. My first stop was the massive Twist and Shout in Denver. I talked with owner Paul Epstein. Over the last uh, decade at large and certainly in the last two to five years, it's been an almost unbelievable rebirth of vinyl. It, and it's not just older guys trying to relive the glory years. It, it, there's a whole new layer of hipster credibility to vinyl. So it's a reality, I and mean, the numbers don't lie. It's gone up a dramatic amount, and certainly in our store, it's, it's huge. The resurgence of vinyl has been across the board. It's, it's finding old stuff that's never been out. It's reissuing all the classics, you know, huge selling numbers on Beatles and Led Zeppelin. To get a little more insight on vinyl record sales, I drove up to Boulder and talked with Bart from Bart's Record Shop. It's uh, a blast, first of all. I mean, it's, it's amazing um, what's going on. And we were just talking about an hour ago about how somebody came in and asked me, is everything being repressed on vinyl? And I was like, but no, not even, not even close. But, you know, because there's so many things that people have to do to figure out if they, you know, to be able to press vinyl, to be able to get the rights to press the vinyl. And then there's the idea of possibly finding the master tapes or not, or that sort of thing. Um, but there's so much stuff coming out and so much stuff being reissued. And then, of course, we get a lot of used records. And, and uh, that's a lot of fun because it creates the hunt. And, you know, the resurgence, the interesting thing about the resurgence is there's still, you know, there's so much stuff that's hard to find. So there's a lot of fun in that, you know, when, when, when we get um, 
collections in that, that drive people into the store and then they get excited because it's uh, a lot of stuff is tough to find and tough to find of course with it being a record in good shape. A lot of collectors rely on eBay and purchasing through the internet. As of right now, there are over a million listings under vinyl records. I recently visited a sizable record swap meet, and what I found was a genuine passion for collecting and buyers ready to spend. Well, I keep hearing that there's a resurgence, okay? And I suppose there is. But for those of us who've been doing it for the last few decades, it never really dropped off. Uh, as a matter of fact, during the recession, vinyl plateaued, but it did not drop off. And uh, I, I guess that's because there was a solid base to begin with, but you also have a lot of uh, younger folks who have discovered vinyl and they really like it. And so we're seeing uh, a decent percentage of younger uh, customers than we did, uh, say, three, four years ago. And it is all about the customers. Some say the catalyst that has fueled vinyl sales in recent years is Record Store Day. This one day a year event is like Black Friday, the Kentucky Derby, and a bullfight rolled into a single day. You can never be prepared. Record Store Day has been just, I can't undersell it. It's been a huge phenomenon. I mean, but it's also not been the cause of this. This was, hap this was well underway before Record Store Day started. So, uh, you know, but it, Record Store Day has kind of given it uh, the exclamation point it needed. And since Record Store Day is this week, in part two, we take a closer look at that phenomenon and what store owners are doing to get traffic into their stores. That and more on the next American Music Road Trip. Uh -huh.